Some of you might be thinking, why did you just put a Nietzsche quote in a devlog? But yeah, to me this quote really embodies the frustration I'm feeling right now. You know, it's like, this code is like my house and there's something I really wish I knew before I started. So I'm going to get to that. When I started this journey, I never knew how far I was going to take it. Like how much of the level I was going to implement or if I was even going to implement multiple levels. Basically, I'm at the point where there's so much to change and if I change one thing, it has a domino effect and it breaks a bunch of things. So then I got to the next question, like, do I really want to invest so much time into this code base? And actually, I don't, you know. I've been wanting to start a new game, you know, not something huge, but just for learning. I think it's better when you're starting off to do smaller projects instead of huge ones, especially when you're bad at coding and it's hard to maintain bad code. So that's where I'm at. So these are the four things I wish I knew before I started programming Mario. When I started building Mario, I did not realize the whole world of pixels that I was getting myself into. I didn't even know that like it was its own genre of games, so I was very ignorant when I first started. Um, and first off, I was using a website to draw my pixel art, and when I started getting a little frustrated with the lack of tools it provided, I had to move on to a sprite, which is what most 2D game devs use if they're into pixel art. And I still didn't really know about like the sizes and what to do. I was just kind of freeballing it. And for those of you who want to know more about what sizes you should make your pixel art, I really recommend a video uh, by a pixel overload. What canvas size should you use for pixel art? And after watching it once, like it just clicked in my mind. And I wish I had known this when I first started off. The main parts of the video that I would like to convey is that when you're making pixel art, you should choose sizes in the power of two. So on the really small end, it is an 8x8, eight eight. then it goes up to 16x16, 32x32, 16 16, and then 64x64. 64 64. So to me, I think the sweet spot is like 32x32, 32 32, but it really depends on the level of detail you want to get into your game. But yeah, these are very important decisions that should you should think about intensely before you start making a game. And I did not think about these at all. So yeah. So look, I'm in a sprite now, and this is a 32 by 32. So these squares here are 16 by 16 and it looks fine. But if I do something that is not within these power of two, like for instance, 52 by 52 isn't, then look, you see it becomes weird, the squares are cut off, and it's just it's just not ideal, and it's not recommended when you're making the 2D games. You know, it's easy to get stuck in the 21st century and think that, oh, we need to make our game super complicated. But when you look back at your favorite games, you know, it wasn't the high quality graphics that got you or anything. It was just the character of the game. And at the end of the day, I think that that's something that's overlooked and it's something that's very, very important. Also, I remember uh, gradually adding more and more detail to Mario and the world around him. Like for instance, the question mark, like I just made them flash. And that simple change really gave it more feeling also of course like the, the walking animations the jumping animations like these small things that you change really just make it come to life when i first started programming mario i was holding on for dear life i didn't think that it was in my reach to polish the character mechanics but as the weeks started sliding by i was getting more and more frustrated with mario i wanted him to feel like the real game 
but there was just so much code to fish through and there were so many changes that had to be made that it was just like too far down the line. When someone plays your video game, the user is directly connected to the main character and it stays like that for the rest of the game, I mean unless there's the ability to change characters. So the point is, is that you really need to make that character feel good, it needs to be smooth, it needs to be feel right, and that's why it's you need to put a tremendous amount of effort right at the beginning because that affects all the rest of the mechanics in the game. So I was really fascinated when I learned about the different game art styles and how that really affects their mechanics. So there's three different types of games, side-scrolling, top-down, and isomorphic. So the, the difference in them are basically how many faces that they show. So in side-scrolling game, you only see one face of the cube, let's say if your game is com composed of squares. In top-down, you could see two sides of that cube. Um, and then finally, in isomorphic, it's angled in a way that you could see three types, uh, three faces of the cube, and it gives it the impression of 3D in a 2D world, so it's very interesting. You start to see how certain game mechanics are better for the different projection styles, and it's really interesting. But yeah, seeing these different projection styles and pixel art and vector art and just all these different game mechanics that go into these 2D games, it really expanded my mind and made me think about all the possibilities and it was just a really nice learning experience that gave me many, many ideas. So if you learned anything from this or if you have some advice or something you want to tell me, please leave it in the comment and yes, I hope you at least took something away from this video. Um, but yeah, we'll see what is the next thing. Honestly, I have my eye on these top-down games, so maybe that's what will happen next. Alright, have a good day. Catch you later. Goodbye.